What is up, folks? Welcome back. This is the Cloud Pilot, and in this episode, we are going to talk about how to start a career in DevOps. And for that, we have a very special guest who is also a very famous YouTuber known by the name Cloud Advocate. So today, we'll be having Krishna Chaitanya Gadiraju, also known as CK, on our podcast. Let's listen to it. This is the Cloud Pilot, and you're listening to the Cloud Pilot podcast. <laughs> Welcome, welcome to the Cloud Pilot Podcast. Thank you so much for coming. It's been an absolute pleasure to see you here. No, thank you so much, Sudesh, uh, for having me. And we have been planning this for a long time. And I haven't even recorded anything in my channel as well. So I'm looking forward to this. And I'm looking forward to have a great conversation with you. Yeah, I mean, uh, two months of planning and finally we could do yeah. Why don't we kickstart our conversation uh, with your background and how you started and how it's been going on? So I graduated in 2007 uh, in Bachelor's in Computer Science. The first company I have joined, fortunately or unfortunately, I did not get an opportunity in the on-campus interview. Uh, I could not get through and I failed in the final HR round for Accenture. Blessing in disguise, I worked in a startup company and that was the best thing I, uh, for me because startup companies company gave, gave me a lot of opportunity to work directly on the production environment, you know, in, in pressure situations and a lot of things to, to learn. So that was my first company. And I got introduced into the Linux part of the things in my first company. And that's when I shaped up my career as a person who would love Linux systems and then PHP programming a little bit. I had to design a website for them. So okay. in a startup company, you know, you have to do everything from scratch, yeah. right? Whatever they ask you. Sometimes even if you have to mop the floor, you have to do I'm just kidding. I did not mop anything. <laughs> but sort of jack of all trades, you know, in that company. And then as I was working there, first time I had to work on Oracle administration and Oracle apps. Uh, it was 9i or 10G around that version of Oracle database. I'm not sure like mm -hmm. people know those versions now because it was in 2008. And uh, at that point, I always felt like whenever you're working in any company, whenever there is something to learn, how can you add value to that technology, whatever you learn. For example, if I was introduced to Oracle and then I thought, why don't I spend some time and then get certification? So I get, got my Oracle 10G certification and they gave me some hike. My salary was around what? I think 15 to 20,000 per month or something around. So after that, with the same pay, I switched to another company. I haven't took a more hike because I wanted to build more on the technology. I, I always felt like once you invest in the technology, it will pay you more in, in down the lane. Correct. So if, if given an opportunity, if you want to switch a company with even lesser pay, but you feel like that company is going to give you more and more top up of what you're learning, then... I, I would take that. So I, I joined the other company and then there also, it's a mid-tier company and there I got opportunity to work on the BSNL top-up application oh. and it's one terabytes of huge, a huge database, very critical database. And I did migration to 11G with my mentors. So that's my second company. And then okay, one point where I wanted to change the company was because they gave me, uh, they asked me to work in the night shift oh. because all the administration party, right? Most of the time, whenever you're in a small company or whenever you are starting off your career, at the starting of your career, you'd have to work in night shift whenever you're in operation side, right? I hated night shifts. Um, not a night person at all. I, I prefer mornings, early mornings and mm -hmm. things doing in in the early morning. So that one night I had to spend till 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. I had to sleep <laughs> in the BSNL office itself uh, because you're not supposed to get get out. It's a government office, government building. Okay. It's like massive tower in Hyderabad. And it's top floor. You have all the Siemens systems and and all the servers. So it's a high secure zone. Once you are in, you can only come out after 6 a.m. in the morning. So that time I felt like this Oracle DBA is screwing up my health. I have to change, you know. And then I changed another company. But the next company is a big company, CA Technologies. And now it is acquired by Broadcom. I think the name is still same, but by Broadcom, I guess. So there, you know, I have again got into new things uh, like Selenium automation, testing part. So I've joined there as a test engineer. So I switch. In a nutshell, if you look at my CV or if you look at my journey, my background IT journey is that I gained a lot of skills in systems, Linux systems, uh, Oracle databases, QA, and like all the different stages of SDLC have gained knowledge. Yeah. And then the, the first time I have heard DevOps at, at that company. So that's when I thought like, okay, uh, I wanted to learn more about this and then again, switch to DevOps in another company. The game changer. Yeah. And then I, the latest company where I'm working currently is Verizon. I've been working here since 2015. I was at Verizon at the right time because Verizon was going through the digital transformation and they needed people to be part of that. So whenever you're in a company, whenever they're going through the transformation, then you will obviously learn a lot because at enterprise scale, 
Fortune 13th or 14th company, how they are moving applications to cloud, how se- how security matters a lot for them most of the time. And then uh, the other things and how they choose the tools or when you are working at that scale. Um, and also I worked in US at, at, at headquarters. I think we're going to discuss about that in the later part of this video. But those things um, help me, you know, and they help me a lot that I can say since 2015, 16, I've seen uh, DevOps at a very big scale or how things shape up in DevOps or cloud in at a larger scale. So that's about IT career uh, since 2008, since 2008 till now. <laughs> really phenomenal. What a great journey. When you saw the rise of DevOps, you got into DevOps at the early stages, which is really impressive. How did you, uh, you know, pick uh, DevOps as your career? I mean, was there any influential factor? And then you started your YouTube journey, you know, uh, giving back to the community for DevOps. Yeah. How did that journey start? And you know, how did you pick DevOps? Yeah, so again, at uh, CA Technologies, so that's when I have learned about, DevOps, learned about uh, DevOps. First time I've heard that term. And then so the most important thing is what I've learned is that DevOps is not just about tools, right? It is more about the cultural thing. That's yeah. what people tend to miss a lot. Yeah. And I've seen the real cultural transformation there. Like they have changed people's titles to say that everybody is a software engineer. There is no more operations engineer or um, QA engineer. So everybody's title was changed to software engineer. There were no timesheets. So the, I have seen these cultural transformations. Uh, Agile, I was part of the Agile team. Uh, I've seen uh, like how Agile works and how it closely works with DevOps and how it actually helps DevOps. So that's when uh, it was going very well at CA. Uh, it's a very good company, product-based company. And you have the best developer experience when you're working for a product-based company. You know, I feel that if you're working for a service-based company and you'll see the difference when you're working for a product-based company, be it any product, especially the ones that you're selling directly to the customers. When I was there and then now um, it's been three years, I wanted to change. And there was another trigger point of that change as well because I was not getting, I did not get promotion or something around that time. And I felt like I'm getting into comfort zone yeah. uh, in this company. So I have to move and I don't want to to move as a QA engineer or a manual QA because manual, I always felt like it's in a danger zone. Even then I felt like manual is, you know, it's, it's tough. Mm-hmm. Um, it's easy job for me. So whenever I felt things are easy, then, you know, you might, you might be in, in a danger zone. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, break out of the comfort zone. <laughs> So I, I learned a bit of, about DevOps, meaning uh, I know cultural part of it. So at CA, I have learned about Ansible and they started using AWS. I was part of the platform team, fortunately. So I've automated things using a little bit of Ansible and Shell. So I started learning these things myself. I went into Google and there were very few articles about DevOps at that time. I mean, there was one IBM videos about DevOps. I've learned what is the bare minimum that I have to learn to get a job in DevOps. So I've learned all those things and I got my first job in a, again, tier company and in Hyderabad itself. And there I've spent around six months. I've learned more about DevOps there. And then I switched to Verizon. So that's when I started make getting into DevOps, uh, you know, everything about DevOps. And the best thing that have that happened to me, I did not plan it that way, was that whenever I was working at CA and then when I was changing into another company, some people noticed my, my resume in Naukri. Uh, it was Edureka. You know Edureka, right? Edureka and other educational company, educational institutions yeah. who teach. So they said like, you know, why don't you teach DevOps? Uh, mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I know DevOps, I know a few tools, but I don't know everything. Like, I don't know whatever you want me to teach. So then they gave me the course structure, what I have to go through, what I have to teach. So that was the best part of, I think, my career because I have learned a lot of things by doing that. I had to learn because you are teaching people of 11, 12 years of experience and they are very good at system administration or other things. So I cannot just go and, you know, BS around it. And uh, I always felt like whenever I'm teaching, I better prepare well. If not, don't teach because, uh, you know, it's of no point. People can easily identify whether you're BSing or or you're teaching right things. So... That was my first time. And fortunately, I got very good reviews. I still have that Excel sheet. I do like after, after each class, it will send you how much pe- people gave rating for that class. And in some classes, I could not, I told them honestly that, look, uh, this this concept, I cannot give you 100% tutorials about how to do a demo on this, like DNS and other concepts. I was a little lacking there. Networking is not my biggest strength mm-hmm. at that time. So yeah, it worked out well. Fortunately, I have learned so many things like Docker. First time I've learned Docker at the uh, while I was teaching. I've learned two, so many tools and everything. So it was easy for me to crack interview at that time because a lot of companies were first time they, they're trying to hire people in DevOps and then they were asking some basic questions, right? I think Jenkins and Docker and all those things. So that that's how I, I got introduced to DevOps. Now, the second part of the question, you asked me 
about uh, the YouTube journey. Um, that happened when I was working in US. That time in 2018-19. So my friend started a YouTube channel. He was doing good. And then uh, I wanted to always teach at Udemy. I wanted to create a course. Uh, first time I did my G uh, Google Cloud Associate exam in uh, 2018, I believe. You know, first certification I've done. Okay. And then I haven't found a lot of videos on uh, Google Cloud. Mm -hmm. There was, I think, Rangas was in uh, Udemy, I believe. And there was one more person in Udemy. So that's, that's all. And, and there were other other courses in a cloud guru, which I've learned. Matthias Anderson, uh, I met him personally. So these were the courses. And then my intention of uh, coming into, because I was in training, I was training people, even after Edureka, I've tra trained people. So I wanted to create this course, you know, on uh, Google Cloud. Mm -hmm. And that too, in of course, in Udemy. But I was so lazy that that did not happen. <laughs> so <laughs> that that's why I thought like course creation takes time. You have to prepare the curriculum Absolutely. and then you have to create topics then it's a grind so Where? what i thought is like yeah in, in 2019 i thought in summer uh, in us i had some time i thought like why, why don't i just record myself and see how people would respond to my video first video so then i i posted my first video about how i got my first cert certification in google cloud uh, associate cloud engineer and then about all the journey or how I have uh, wrote the exam or what kind of topics that were asked in the exam how I got this cup they were, they were giving away cups at that time right now they are not giving it anymore yeah. uh, I showed them uh, I showed them this cup you know <laughs> <laughs> it's getting blurred here but yeah I showed them the cup so that was the fun time uh, that first video I posted I and then I got some feedback from people so it was a fast positive feedback then I felt like okay I can create more videos on Google Cloud and then see the response, how it is, how people are responding. But I wanted to create, honestly, when I started, I wanted to create more videos on Google Cloud itself, topic by topic. How things have changed is that when I started getting into DevOps, into videos, in YouTube videos, then I got more response because people were looking for DevOps concepts also. And then the career part, one video went viral with 1 million views. So that was, I think, the tipping point. Uh, the channel got a lot of views and subscribers. Yeah, so that's how I came into YouTube and I've learned a lot. And I always said, like, people should create their own channel like you did, you know, because it's a great learning. Amazing that, you know, you get feedback directly from the people. You know, mm -hmm. I think this is one of, one of the platforms where it gives perfect feedback too many analytics so it's up to you however you want to do because it's instant feedback i mean uh yeah uh, about the course creation i totally agree because you know it took me more than one year to launch my course and that too oh the beginners course for google cloud it's it's on udemy now i think it's oh, really awesome and okay. i have uh, crossed uh, more than thousand students so is it on uh associate cloud engineer or no it's it's basically introduction to google cloud for beginners for absolute beginners so no i love your podcast i've, I've even watched some of the podcasts um like you said we are doing a great service to people, freshers or anybody who are getting into podcasts. Are, I mean, it has its own, what you call benefits, right? Because you can directly hear from people uh, when compared to the person teaching. You can also just put on your headphones and you don't have to watch faces, just yeah. drive and then listen to people what they're saying. So that's the ben benefit of podcast, uh, unlike tutorials. So yeah, uh, keep continue to keep doing that. And then hopefully you'll also reach to the greater heights soon. <laughs> what are those challenges and learnings that you have faced? So yeah, challenges in the terms of both like IT, uh, I mean, especially in that IT is that, so each career, whenever you are joined, whenever you, when you join a company as a fresher, uh, you face some challenges. When you grow up the ladder into management or, uh, you know, other roles, you face other challenges because people feel that when, especially when you join a company in, when you have fresher when you're fresher or two three years of experience you feel like look managers uh, they don't have any pressure they, they are just like approving the timesheets or giving you work but uh, yeah. it's not true because, you know after spending a lot of time in it every okay. level has their own challenge because the amount of money you are paid you are making deci decisions at a, high, a larger scale that will impact other people's life the challenges that i faced like i've said in different stages like technical challenges are one thing that you can always solve uh, through through Google or Stack Overflow or taking help of friends. And there are other challenges that, like I've said, I've told you, night shifts and all, those were impacting my health and other stuff. So those are other challenges that I faced. And then there were in challenges in the terms of management, management, politics, or anything that happens in, in a company. Uh, those were some of the challenges that I faced. And then there were cultural challenges that I also faced when I moved to US. There, it was uh, a cultural shock. Slowly, I've got into that culture and uh, for a good reason, uh, you know, that's the good thing. And so that those were some challenges. If you go into uh, minute details, of course, each project will have its own challenges uh, that will challenge you implementation wise, DevOps or cloud or any of those things, which, which happen for anybody, like even for you, you will face those. And YouTube wise, it's a grind. 
that you have to create a video else google is going to take you down yeah. or they will you you're they are not going to recommend your channel to a lot of viewers so it was a constant grind i maintained that for a long time but now i felt like screw up those analytics <laughs> just focus on whenever you want to do it just deliver quality content uh, the biggest challenge for me in youtube is that i came in to deliver specific thing but google said it's not working out you have to do something else <laughs> so that's how you see a lot of youtubers right yeah. uh, they come into youtube to deliver data structures but yeah. then what will happen is ultimately they will transform into like how i made million in, <laughs> in one year <laughs> like how i have <laughs> bought this car or uh, how ds helped me to data structures helped me to join this company because yeah. people are more interested in that right so th- those are some of the challenges that you will face as a youtuber how can somebody start a career in tech what should they start with and uh, you know what, what are the things that they should learn what are those things they should be following in order to get themselves into a path of the maybe for a fresher sure. the hard truth you know this vish right whenever you are going for a fresher as a job it is tough to get into devops because devops engineers 80 to 90% they look for experience yeah. there are always exceptions exceptions that companies want a fresher devops engineer which is kind of rare yeah. but having said that you don't have to be worried too much about it if you are passionate about, about devops what my suggestion is that always learn at least one programming language to start with be- whether you love java or python go or anything just learn how to automate and learn programming language because down the lane you will see whether it is devops or anything you will always have to automate that yeah. that's the end goal right as a fresher the first thing is focus on that whether you like it or not learn shell scripting bare minimum whenever you are you are going for an interview they will say okay at least can you please automate this or solve this shell script yeah. so they'll be happy with that so that is number one and number two is most of the devops engineer jobs are around systems and operations that's how you will see in the inter- in the interviews and you will see in the certifications sre devops or about are about maintaining the platforms automating the platforms and the incident responses of the platforms how do you manage the incidents you have to be passionate about that and if your expectation is that i will become a devops engineer and then i will uh, write an application or i will develop an application then that's not the right thing i mean that's not what is expected from you so your job as a devops engineer or in future it might be a platform engineer it might transform into platform engineer once companies are okay with whole the transform all transformation and automating you have to be passionate about how you can manage those systems automate the pipelines where you find a gap how can you bring this code a from uh, the git to the production either you're using kubernetes or you're using your vms so whatever it is you have to be as a fresher or even as an experienced person you have to learn all these concepts i think that's about it now it might be overwhelming that okay there are too many tools there are also memes about it right uh, there are songs okay. about it <laughs> we have seen in linkedin but it's not really that you have to learn everything learn at least one cloud technology whether aws or gcp or azure doesn't matter you can always debate about what cloud you want go for one cloud you know if if you're really confused pick aws that's also fine and then learn about how to automate your code and how to put that into aws uh, whether you can learn kubernetes how to automate using terraform or cloud formation it's okay so just as a fresher learn about these things and then take smaller projects which we can discuss in 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 uh, the next topics but create smaller projects that can help you to learn devops in the right way the theory is very less in devops yeah. maybe some concepts are there linux concepts or networking concepts but more it is doing hands on and automating things focus more on that is what i would say all these concepts networking i mean automating tools terraform kit linux jenkins not so much now i would maybe if you're asking me now i would not say jenkins previously in my videos i i, I told jenkins but now focus more on uh, github actions gitlab ci because companies are moving towards that and then cloud i think i have seen the trend down students mainly that they want to be a devops engineer but they actually don't know what is a devops engineer they don't know about this cultural uh, transformation yeah. they don't know what what is you know how how that is practiced they they they, they just think that it's a few tools you have to set up some cicd that is also part again that is not totally devops it's more like a sysadmin <laughs> something uh, i think uh, most students have a misunderstanding about this so i think True. that cleared by this we talked about starting a career in devops but you know what most people i think what they lack is a road map which they can start with what are the things specifically they should learn what are the tools so what do you think would be a road map for somebody who wants to start a career in devops yeah so there is a very good website called roadmap.sh I think they have covered very well about each topic that a person has to learn as a devops engineer. You have to have very good understanding of systems and operations and all those concepts very well. I mean that's like bare minimum whether you're coming from a QA engineer or whether you're 
want to shift a career from a you know SAP consultant or anywhere or even from a developer. So you have to have the passionate of keeping systems healthy or automating systems, maintaining the platforms and automating things to to the production environments. And first, whenever you want to get into DevOps as a as a fresher or anybody from different career understand what is DevOps. This is very important because what it is trying to do as a culturally uh, or why companies are going into DevOps is the most important thing or, or what are the key metrics that are important in DevOps uh, or as a DevOps engineer or what key metrics that company is trying to solve. So when you do know these basics thing or basics or uh, the continuous integration, continuous deployment or all this basic stuff, it will be easy for you to know that what is your role going to be in a company and then start with basics of Linux and start learning basics of uh, git because everybody is using git you cannot escape from that and then how you can integrate ci or how the ci process actually work with git the good thing is now you don't have to use jenkins you can use gitlab ci or github actions itself directly create those workflows and take the code uh, to the cloud my best advice to learn it learn this faster is don't look at look at these things in isolation look at these things in a in an orchestrated way, how you are going to orchestrate all these tools and the cloud platforms to achieve your goal of velocity. So what is velocity, right? How fast you can commit or how fast you are taking the code from your Git repository to production. Because that's the end goal of any company, whether whenever they're going into DevOps, right? Because because they want to compete with other companies and they want to go faster to the market. So that's the whole part. In doing this, you're going to automate things and then you're going to use different tools. So these tools are, even if you're using shell script, that is fine. But ultimately the goal is to take the code. But there are certain tools in the market that will help you to accelerate this. So those are like Terraform or um, Ansible to an extent. Now these days, Ansible, very less companies are using it for a reason because you have Kubernetes and you know you have Argo CD and other tools that are helping the Kubernetes as a platform for the GitOps and uh, you know there is Customize and Helm and other stuff that are coming in. So there are a million ways of doing the same thing. So you as an engineer, you have to find the right way to and adopt to the company's way of implementing the pipeline and you can go into the details of what you have to learn in in the each sdlc pipeline or in in your cicd pipeline what tools will you have to use and uh, how much you have to learn to implement that so now how you can learn is i have explained this in my last video also because see what is happening is i've seen a lot of people i gave a, i gave a stat as well so the first thing that everybody does even i do the same thing is go and sign up for a course yeah. whether it is 30 hour course and 40 hour course because by, by the way i'm not a huge fan of any course that is more than 15 20 hours because i cannot complete that i thought i'm 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 not doing it, but there is a stat that says like only four to five percent of people who actually complete the whole course in Udemy, uh, less than five percent maybe. My suggestion is that course courses you have to learn or you can learn from anywhere. First, try to create your own project and then go into course that will help you to uh, implement that. Let's say the project is to uh, write a Terraform to provision cloud service, you know, provision something in AWS or GCP. How do you do that? The easiest way is go to Terraform website and just download the Terraform and implement it. But now people might say like GK, yeah, because you know you. You know, you know that this is how it works. It's easy to <laughs> say that. <laughs> so that is true. Uh, so that's why you, you have, they have to rely on you and and uh, channels, YouTube channels to understand this, these projects and how companies implement DevOps. Because now when they know that, it's easy to uh, practice things. Stack Overflow, Udemy, YouTube, or any such platforms will help you to know those things and implement these uh, those things. So what I'm trying to say is that learn by do it yourself. You know, learn by implementing it yourself. More than watching 15 hours of video and then uh, going for an interview will be failure because unless you practice that, you cannot face any interview. Interviews, okay. they will grill you some questions say, in Kubernetes. Let's say a pod scheduler has failed or uh, there is a crash loop container. How did you debug that? These things, it will only happen when, whenever you, uh, you know, deploy that into yeah. Kubernetes. Platform. I, my suggestion is learn the roadmap from roadmap.sh or any YouTube channel and then implement those things by creating smaller projects. I, I think I'm saying this to more people these days because uh, when I look back how I have learned it, I actually have learned it that way. Like learn bare minimum that is required. Now, because when we say that learn Terraform, it doesn't mean that you go and get certification in Terraform. <laughs> because if your target is to get a job in DevOps in next one or two months, you should not spend your time in going through a course of Terraform for 20 hours because yeah. that, those 20 hours will become one to two months easily. So nobody has time to do that. Unless you are a student, you came out of college recently and you are passionate and then you complete those 20 hours. Of course, in, in 20 hours or 30 hours, which is very difficult. So if you are realistically speaking, 
20 hours of course might take 30 days or you mm-hmm. know more than that learn bare minimum what is terraform how to use terraform to provision infrastructure and then move on to the next topic and work on the project so that's all that would be the fastest way of learning so uh, again uh, you know what most people usually uh, also ask me is that you know how yeah how can they start doing projects because they have gone through the courses they have uh, read this documentation here and there but they don't yes. really know you know what how to build a project what do you think you know based on your suggestion maybe uh, you know are some ideas for projects that they can showcase in terms of their devops skills this is a common question you you have asked the right question and uh, it's not that easy right because unless you have experienced that you don't know what companies do in the terms of creating a project but this much I can say that anybody has to change at one point in IT career. Anybody will become a fresher at some point for that technology. When I have been like that in 2015 or 16, I don't know DevOps. I come joined a company as a fresher in DevOps, but I had enough IT experience. Whether I am hiring or anybody is hiring, we only ask you first two questions will be about tell me about yourself and then okay, what you have done in DevOps. So I really don't care whether you have really worked in a project for a client or you have done a POC and you are able to answer my technical questions. That's all anybody would care. So don't have that fear that I haven't had a real project experience yeah. that, you know, I'm not able to, I cannot go for an interview. Talking about projects, right? So once you have that confidence that, okay, I can do some POCs, projects, and then I can apply and put that in a resume. See, be honest about this. Don't say that I really worked for a client so-and-so by doing while doing this project. I mean, there are many people who do that. I'm not the person to say whether it is right or wrong. But if I'm going for an interview, I'll, I'll always say I did a POC and that's okay. You know, I haven't worked it really in a project, but I will say POC and people are okay with that. The second important question is how to create this project or how would I even know as a, you know, some other technology I'm working in a QA or a DBA, how would I know that a person has to learn these projects, right? So one way is obviously following the channels and then getting some experience from them or asking them or being them in LinkedIn, asking for suggestions like you or me or anybody who is working in a real uh, as a DevOps engineer or a cloud engineer. What are the things that you guys do? What is your day-to-day life? How does your day-to-day life as a DevOps engineer would look like? What do you do? What automation you do? That is one way, asking from people. Second way is if you're smart enough, look for the roles and responsibilities in any DevOps engineer job description. You will pretty much, they will reveal whatever they're looking for. And the third way is build the scenarios from the interview questions itself. Like the interview question, uh, if you interview questions, you can find it anywhere Glassdoor or any any such website interview questions if you do it from google the problem is that these days you are seeing more marketing websites than the actual interview questions even still when whenever i'm searching for devops engineer interview questions people will say what is ci what is continuous integration nobody is going to ask you continuous integration these days now very rare yeah. you know sometimes they'll ask you just to test your knowledge nobody is going to give you a job on that question alone there are now those questions are gone those questions are gone were gone in 2015 16 itself now there are tougher questions but the best way is go through glassdoor or uh, other websites, a website that will give you enough information. Let's say the question is, uh, how did you implement, you know, a scale? Uh, how did you implement an application in Kubernetes that can automatically scale? Or how did you implement this microservice application? Can you please uh, walk through the whole scenario? Or how did you migrate an application? Or how did you automate provisioning right from scratch? And what challenges you faced? So those, re- those, that information will reveal a lot of questions. I mean, you have to practice a lot in that question itself. The, the question is a loaded question, right? How did you implement a Kubernetes uh, automation of Kubernetes application or application in Kubernetes platform? So now if you have to practice that, you have to learn 50, 60 topics for that to be implemented. In the same company, they'll also ask you about what are the automation tools that you have done or then they will go into go into questions about those tools, right? So this is the way you can create the project. And then there are many other ways, like for instance, certifications will help you that. Whenever you're preparing for a DevOps senior certification in AWS or GCP, uh, there are scenarios that they'll ask you. So you can prepare projects around by looking at the questions in the certifications. Yeah. So this is the way you can do it. I think that's the best way to create a project and then put that in your resume. For somebody who is having, uh, you know, some experience in the industry, how can they switch their career to DevOps? We talked about freshers and that will really help them. But for people who yeah. are having experience or maybe for people who are, who is not from a technical background, but they want to switch to DevOps, what should they do? And, you know, how can they ma- basically make their career switch? Yeah, so I've done that myself. In my case, the advantage was that I have done it at a very, very early stage. But if you are doing it now, like 
anybody who is doing it from a DBA, people do that, you know, for the monetary reasons or, you know, that's not bad at all. It, it's the right thing to do. So for them, the concepts and those things will apply. It doesn't matter if it is a fresher or uh, experienced person. But the advantage of experienced person switching is because they have enough IT experience. They can relate to these things in a, in a company uh, as a database administrator. My feeling is that the person who are into operation side more will have will easily adopt to DevOps jobs much faster than a person who is coming from an application background or a person who, ha who has more experience in just writing Java code. I'm not saying they cannot switch. But I'm just saying that these people can relate it more yeah. because uh, they can relate to SRE concepts and all those things much easier and much faster yeah. because they have been doing that. Now, on top of it, they have to learn these DevOps, you know, roadmap that we have discussed. So it's the same thing, same creation of POCs. One way that can keep you motivated to switch is that maybe pick a certification course or certification path or any cloud service provider and pick that you wanted to get this certification by end of this. That's That will give you a structured way of learning. That's all I'm saying. You can do it in multiple ways, but this way you can uh, aim for a certification course for a basic certification like Cloud Digital Leader in GCP case. AWS also has a Cloud Practitioner and Azure has Azure Fundamentals. They are pretty much giving it for free, like Azure Fundamentals free anywhere. You just have to learn, uh, attend a training and just do it. And the best part it is, it is that it is never expiring. Just pick that and then that gives you motivation and it will, once, ever, once you get the certification, you will feel like now I'll put it on my resume and I'll go for interviews. So that's, you know, one other way of another way of learning. But ultimately, experienced people have better advantage in the terms of real IT experience. Yeah. And then now you have to keep on adding your technologies and skills to get a job. The same roadmap, nothing changes. So what do you think? What is your perspective towards or what is your suggestion for somebody who's from a non-tech background to start a career in DevOps? Like, for example, can we say that from a call center background in some cases? Yeah, let's say, let's say they are not from a technical background any other right way. right i know my cousin i can tell real story he has switched from call center job and then he switched to sap so there are instances of people doing that justify your experience that's the toughest thing for them yeah yes. you can do as much hard work as you want but then as soon as you put yourself as a five years of experienced person uh, out of which four years or five years itself is in a call center so that's that will be the tough part yes. now how do you want to do it it's up to you I mean, we don't have to say that <laughs> there are ways of doing it. People do that. Like I've said, again, we are nobody to say whether it is right or wrong. There are both sides of the story. Some philosophers say that is true. Some philosophers say this is true. You know, it's, it's up to people to decide. The hard work remains same, whether it is non-technical or technical. Of course, I mean, the non-technical person will have to do more hard work because you have to learn things from scratch. So people have done it. You know, I have my cousin who has done it to SAP. You have to put effort. So put yourself give yourself some time for three to four months and then then learn all these have anybody who can mentor you that will be the best thing either through linkedin or um, uh, either as a person and for these people my suggestion is that because you even don't know the art of going through google and documentation and then stack overflow which is uh, which is important thing if possible you you know feel free to join a course direct in-person course and maintain that relation and then be part of that classroom and then you know talk to people because to gain the cultural experience and cultural knowledge of how people really work that's the most important thing i think and then join workshops and then build that networking to get into devops or cloud how easy yeah. is it to secure a job abroad and uh, you know what are the different ways somebody can migrate to another country and you know what should they basically do in order to make themselves prepared for the job the preparation doesn't require any additional preparation if you want to go to other countries it's the same preparation but the way you create a profile will matter like in linkedin and then the way you are marketing yourself to be ready for the other country is important i think the preparation stage and the linkedin stage i think uh, these two are the main important things additionally you don't have to learn any, uh, maybe in some countries, let's say if you're going to Germany, learning German language will be uh, important. But most of the time in IT, advantage is that any country where you're going, uh, thankfully for Indians, everybody knows English. Any niche skill is important whenever you're going to abroad. That's when people would invite you to go work for their companies in abroad because they could not find a, a local skill in that technology, right? So that's the same preparation wise. Now the second immigration, of course, yes, US is the difficult because US is a land of opportunities. A lot of people would love to go to US and work. And there are three ways of getting into US. So one is student visa, easiest way to get into US, write GRE, get a score, go and then spend one and a half year in a university and then try to find a job. The second visa is H1 visa, H1B. A lot of people migrate on H1B. A lot of service-based companies, especially Cognizant and Infosys, they give you an opportunity to work for a client in US. So that's another way. Again, all these people who are going into H1 will uh, come into EB2 category. It, it, these are some uh, immigration concepts. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the third way is L1 transfer 
transfer if you're working for a big product based company big mnc like google amazon amazon or any such big big company they give you an opportunity to work in us like they migrate or they transfer you to work in us that's how i went to us which is called l1 transfer i mean the good thing about it is l1 visa has validity of 6 years and then uh, you get good pay when compared to h1 because uh, these companies will will give you the same amount of pay as a person who is working in us that's that's how i went there i was about to get gc but i flew back during covid a lot of things have changed during covid these three are the main ways that you can get into us if you are open to other countries then there are other countries as well sweden uh, U- europe germany uh, uk so these countries in europe are uh, welcoming you uh, to work from there and there is middle east also these days if you i think yeah if you have, have a good experience in cloud there are countries that most of people from kerala also travel to middle east as you know <laughs> so <laughs> so there are other countries yeah my suggestion is work at least for few years and come back if you want to come back one thing is you will learn the cultural experience that will help you a lot when you are growing up in in it now that you are working uh, in uh, dev sec ops <clears throat> what is dev sec ops and you know can we talk more about it? when the whole devops started and then the ci cd pipelines and all those things were happening i think somewhere people forgot that security is also important part so security was done but maybe it was done in isolation and then it was sort of an afterthought devsecops is how you can move your security to the initial stage of the pipeline like move left or shift left is common terminology that you would listen more when you talk about devsecops like for example whenever you are writing the code itself or whenever you are uh, creating a architecture of an application or a design phase design stage or de- design phase so that's when you would introduce security like a security and architect security architect would look at the design and foresee some of the potential security things that might have to happen or like any other discussion that happens between a devops dev person or an ops person or a qa person you should have your security as part of that your security may want to be part of that discussion because they should also automate certain things or they might see certain things or they might like for example if you are um, creating an architecture or a, a new microservice has to be deployed to production in aws or in gcp and this new microservice have to talk to an external gateway let's say external payment gateway so now unless you have a security person you cannot think like how those guys will think like you know now this application is going through the pci zone or there is a payment tax transaction credit card transaction that is happening so whether this data is encrypted or not whether this data is encrypted with the customer based kms or uh, cme case or default encryption that is used in gcp or aws so these are not allowed in some companies so some of these things though those people can make a decision or they will say whether what we have to do as part of the design to secure them so devsecops is more about that like how you can automate your security as part of your devops pipelines how you can move that thing to the left so that you can automate at an early stage whether it is finding vulnerabilities in the git repo finding vulnerabilities in your jar file after you deploy at, at a later stage so these things are mostly like you can call it as a sec devops or devsecops is naturally means that security as part of your devops pipeline what is the difference between devops and devsecops yeah so the major difference is that focus more on the security part of devops in the devsecops uh, versus your usual devops practices that you follow so there are additional certifications that might help you if you want to become a devops devsecops engineer or a security expert or a cloud security engineer for example the caissp certification that's very tough if not that there are uh, cloud based general certifications as well in security and then there is cloud security certifications for each cloud service provider so those things definitely will help okay i think uh, this sums up pretty much what we wanted to talk so thank you so much uh, gk for spending mm-hmm. the time what would you like sure. to tell our audience specifically to career i think we discussed a lot about it career in general always try to look out for a change don't be in a comfort zone and there are a lot of philosoph i mean there are a lot of youtube influencers you can learn from a lot of people uh, they say the same thing it's not idea to be it's not a good idea to be in a comfort zone so keep switching that's that's the best thing in it and i think now you also know that like you uh, people should focus more on creating multiple income streams not only just working in your day to day job but but also find a way create a channel or create a course content create a course content and then make money nobody would complain and your company yeah. will not say anything against that or even youtube channel if you're making money they are fine with that as long as as long as you're not putting your company's secrets out or you're not sharing any confidential information you should be fine and uh, networking like you said it's important right to to start from your college days itself uh, after final year network with lot of people in linkedin create best resume on linkedin market yourself nobody is going to market for you 
you have to market yourself how you can how marketable you are and the other important thing is along with the amount of technical things that you are learning through youtube or through courses to whenever you're growing in your ladder in a company there are other factors that will help you a lot try to read books or try to learn soft skills a lot how well you can communicate will only be super i mean that's going to be super beneficial especially when you're growing so when you're at an early stage to four to five years of experience it's okay nobody cares that much they'll see like okay gk is writing the code we are happy but when you're growing or when you want to become a manager or a director associate director vp svp then these things will help a lot focus more on that and then the last advice is like i said like we discussed about youtube channel if you want to do it that way that is also fine but as people are having less patience these days to listen to you so you have to be crisp communicator whether you are presenting to a vp or svp you will get only one minute or two minutes how you can put your point across in that less time it's like a youtube short people yeah. want to watch shorts more than long videos be a crisp communicator focus on your communication read books spend some quality time and most importantly other other advice that i wanted to give for everybody right from uh, college people to everybody is that spend some quality time outside in nature and you know do more sports activity as well else you, you're going to the amount of uh, things that you're doing with computer now you're going to have more health problems than that <laughs> uh, and, and if you're not healthy then it, it doesn't matter yeah. whether you're growing faster or slower yeah, that's a really a great piece of advice thank you so much once again thank you. It was amazing uh, to have you and I'm very sure the audience uh, would have enjoyed our conversation. How did you enjoy? No, thank you, Desh, for having me. It's been a long time since I uh, had a conversation. Um, I used to have with my friend Raj. So this is my, I think, yeah, it's been a long time. It was a very fun conversation. I've spoken a lot sometimes in between. I'm usually, I'm not that, uh, like, I'm very short. I don't speak a lot, but I did somehow in this. So which means like you asked me some good questions. So I, I really enjoyed a lot. Um, I hope people who are watching this benefit something out of this anybody who is watching this through these questions but again thanks for having me uh, it was fun uh, talking to you yeah uh, great pleasure to have you and i'm very sure the audience would also enjoy if you like the video do hit the thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel we'll catch you in another one till then it's me the cloud pilot signing out.